caffeine is not an effective fat loss substance. However, it is commonly marketed in that way. And in most cases, because people have not interpreted academic papers correctly and or are not taking a long-term view of its effectiveness for fat loss. In other cases, supplement shysters are just straight misleading people for cash money. It is a myth that needs to die. And so I want to start by saying thank you so much for watching the videos. No one is owed views on YouTube and I greatly appreciate the fact that that you take the time to watch my videos. That's never taken for granted. Thank you so much. A caloric deficit, trusting the process and patience is the way to lose fat. Yes, under the counter, fat loss substances such as thyroid medicine that people use is highly effective for, for fat loss, but it is not safe. And when it comes to over the counter fat loss substances, I've made many videos about how I just feel that these are not significantly effective for you for fat loss purposes. And so to start, caffeine is very good for many things. It is ergogenic, it can aid in performance. I very recently made a video explaining that. And of course you can take caffeine, I take it. But the idea that caffeine is a stimulant, so boosts metabolism, so it's a fat loss substance, well technically, yes, that is correct. However, how effective is it really? How many extra calories does it burn? And how long does that effect last? And so here's the first analogy for you. Mustafi is technically a professional football player, but how good is he? Basically, when it comes to fat loss, caffeine is shock drama Mustafi. Oh dear. And so what I'm going to explain in this video is yes, whilst technically people are not wrong per se to say it is a fat loss substance, that only scratches the surface. And when we analyze it in more depth, it is really not an effective fat loss substance. It's like saying I have hair here, so not bold. But when we take a step back, we can see it looks like a scale model of Mars up there. And by the way, good work, very important. Took your time though. I'll be honest, was past 10 p.m. my time fell asleep. And so I've talked about caffeine for fat loss purposes before in video, so I don't want to repeat myself. But what I will do is give you information from the brilliant Dr. Eddie Joe. And as it happens, he has a very recent post about this where he took a piece of research from 2020, which supposedly showed that caffeine is a fat loss substance. And what he did is analyze it and explain what actually, if you just look at the abstract of that paper, yes, that's what people would take away. But when you analyze it in more depth, it's just not that significant. One of the most critical and overlooked factors when it comes to research interpretation is context. Taking research findings out of context is unfortunately commonplace in our field industry. It often stems from one's insatiable need to constantly feed their own biases or to prove their own point. Or may I add Dr. Joe to disingenuously sell their products. And I did manage to say that word, that was a miracle. This post today is not necessarily about the research study per se, but rather an example of how out of context interpretations of findings can be very misleading. And so that's very important to start. It's not the researchers who are misleading people in most cases, and some they do. It's people who are not properly reading the studies, communicating it to an audience, and in many cases selling something or that supporting their viewpoint. Supplementation of caffeine has shown repeatedly over the years of research to have a stimulatory effect on fat oxidation at rest and during exercise. This study is one example and findings showed a 27% increase in fat oxidation rate during an hour of exercise at an intensity relative to the subject's fat max intensity, intensity of highest fat oxidation rate. And that is where people would stop and they would communicate, caffeine is an effective fat loss substance. It boosts your fat oxidation by 27% by this pre-workout with caffeine in it, by my fat loss supplement with, with caffeine and other stuff in it. There is no question that many would read these results in the abstract of the paper and interpret this as something to the effect of, Caffeine boosts fat burn during exercise and will get you shredded. Now let's look at the reality of these results so you can have some context. And so before we start, remember that the fat loss process has several stages to it. You have lipolysis, you have beta oxidation. I have a, a video on that where I doodled and tried to make it simple. So again, please watch that if you don't understand the different stages of fat loss. And again, just to state, yes, caffeine does have an effect on fat oxidation but how significant is it? With fat oxidation, the fat molecules are subsequently converted to excretory molecules such as CO2 and H2O. And when those molecules eventually leave the body, you experience a loss of fat mass. So yes, technically, this 27% increase in fat oxidation equates to increased fat loss during the one hour bout. But this is the key part of this video I want to take away. And you can apply this to many other areas of fitness also. However, does this really translate to practically meaningful fat loss to a point where you could say it will get you shredded? Absolutely not. This 27% increase in fat oxidation during exercise translates to only five grams of additional fat loss. 
Yes, it's technically increased fat loss, but is it practically meaningful in the context of weight loss? Probably not. You could just exercise for a few more minutes and likely achieve the same degree of fat loss. I just want to leave that on screen because that's very important. And this is why in my channel, and most commonly I would say, just do the work instead of buying all these supplements for their supposed purpose. And so I've been saying this in videos for years about caffeine. It is not a significant and chronic fat loss substance. Yes, technically it has an effect on metabolism. Yes, technically it can have an effect on fat oxidation, but not to the point where you need to go out and buy it to try and aid in your fat loss. Your body adapts. So I want to start by asking you a question. When you first drunk coffee, for example, how did you feel? probably felt it. And then when you've been drinking the same dose of caffeine for several months, let's say, how did you feel? Your body adapts. And that's why people increase their dose over time. And so a point I want to start you thinking about is that your body adapts to stimulants that you put into it. And so of course, yes, you can increase the dose, but you can't just increase the dose of caffeine exponentially forever because then you'd be drinking tubs of it. And of course we have to consider side effects and the practicality of that. And another caveat in my other video, I did explain how the form of caffeine that you intake does matter for performance. For example, through coffee, through pills, through gum. So just again, something for you to consider. And so the first point I want to make is with any stimulants that you're taking into your body, your body will adapt over time to that stimulant. That's why people up their doses. That's why people may cycle stuff, for example. And that is one reason instantly why they do not have long lasting effects. They can be thought of as having transient acute effects on the body. They come and go like the wind. And so that's one issue I have with, for example, pre-workouts. Of course you can take a pre-workout. It's not crazy to do so. However, when you first take that pre-workout, how did you feel? When you've been taking it for a few weeks, let's say, does it feel the same? Does it have the same effect? My point is that stimulants give you this short-term kick, which is not sustained over time. And therefore, in regards to that, I think that the fitness industry massively overemphasizes the importance of stimulants for fat loss. And Dr. Joe explains it as not being practically meaningful. In my videos before, I've described it as not being significant and chronic in its effects. It's the same thing. But at this point, again, I want to say that people on social media who say that caffeine is a fat loss substance, in many cases, they may not be misleading leading you. They just don't understand the deeper science involved because it does have an observed effect on metabolism. And so you can take caffeine. Of course you can. I intake caffeine mostly in the morning because I can't feel my sausage fingers. And so this video is not to put you away from caffeine. I just made a video about how great it can be for many aspects of performance but not for fat loss. I'm aware of many fitness influencers who love to share research but oftentimes it is without context. So if someone tells you that is backed by research, ask them to explain the research and findings in detail. If they struggle, then most likely they're not providing any valuable info. And indeed, many fitness influencers just don't cite research at all. And so I'm James Linker. I hope this was useful. I'll see you soon.